I'm going to do an example of the Hungarian algorithm on this 3x3 matrix. This matrix represents A, B and C which are meant to be three people and the numbers 1, 2 and 3 are three different activities and the numbers in the matrix represent how many hours it takes each of these people to do each of these activities. Before I can use the Hungarian algorithm, I'm going to make this all look a little bit smaller, make the numbers smaller, and I'm going to do that using row reduction. Now that means I'm going to look for the smallest number in each of the rows. So to start with, the first row, 12, 16, 14, the smallest number is 12. I'm going to take 12 away from everything in that row. And that will leave me with 0, because 12 take 12 is 0, 4 and 2. It's taking 12 away. The second row, the smallest number is 13, so that will give me 13 take take that away, that will give me there, that will be 2 and uh, 21, that will be 8. And the third row, 15 is the smallest number, so take 15 away, that will give me 3 and 21, that will be 6. There's my row reduction done. Now I want to get a 0 in every row and every column, but there's no 0 in this second column here. I have to do a column reduction just to get that. So in that column, I now look for the smallest number, which is a 2, and take that away from everything else. Let me just scroll down a bit. Take away the 2 in that middle column. So the first column will stay the same. Take 2 away from each one in this column. I'll get a 0 there, 1 there, and 2 there. And the last column is 5. I've now got a 0 in every row and every column. I have to do a test to see if I can use the Hungarian algorithm, if I need to use the Hungarian algorithm. You try and cover up all the zeros with either horizontal or vertical lines. Right, well I can cover them all up this way. That's one vertical line there and one horizontal line there and I have covered up all the zeros. Notice it has taken me two lines and that means that I have to use the Hungarian algorithm. If it had taken me three lines in this 3x3 three three matrix, then I would have no need to do anything other than go straight to the allocation stage. But because it takes me only two lines in a 3x3 three three matrix, I have to use the Hungarian algorithm now. If you have a 4x4 four four matrix, you're looking for four lines. If you're looking for a 3x3 three three matrix, you're looking for three lines uh, and so on. Okay, here we go. The Hungarian algorithm here goes like this. First of all, I have to select the smallest uncovered number. All right, the uncovered ones, that would be the one. I'm going to add that number to anything that has been crossed twice. So instead of this 8 here, I'm going to get 8 plus 1, which will be 9. I'm also going to take this 1 away from everything that is not covered. So that's going to give me a 1, a 1, a 5, and a 0. OK, let's see what it all now looks like. We're going to have a 0, 1, 1, 9, 0, 0, 0, 0, 5. And again, we do the test again. Can I cover everything up? How many, how many straight lines is it going to take me to cover everything up? Two, three. It's going to take three this time. I don't think I can do it any better than just doing one, two, three. Because it now takes three lines, vertical or horizontal, to cover up all the zeros, I have finished and I can go to the allocation stage. Remembering we've got activities A, B and C, sorry, people A, B and C and activities one, two and three. This means that person A can only do activity 1, not 2 or 3. So we, our allocation means we're going to get person A will do activity 1. Person B can do 2 or 3, and person C can do 1 or 2. Well, activities 1 is being done by person A, so activity person C must do activity 2. And that means person B must do activity 3. And I've allocated things in the most efficient manner possible. You might also, in a, in a more complicated situation, do this. So if I just... This is... These dots represent those people. 
and then we get the various activities one two and three and from this here I get that person A must be doing activity one draw a line like that person B can do two or three and person C can do one or two that is just wherever the zeros are now you can see again from this that person A can only do activity one so they must be doing activity one and you get, you get the same allocation as we had before to minimize the time required to do these activities we just need to go back to the original which is up in the box here A, person A doing activity one is there person B doing activity three is there and person C doing activity two is there so the time the minimum time to do all those activities with the correct allocation will be adding those numbers together so 12 and 18 is 30 plus 13 is 43 hours in this situation right that's that